Yeah, he sure is. And he's bad, isn't he? Yeah. Where are we going, new sheriff? Pretend I went fishing. What? Pretend I went fishing. Maybe he'll go away. Are you scared of them, sheriff? Yup. He's a big, bad man. And I pretend I'm not here.
You could use some calming down, Daddy. You're worrying too much about the election. Why don't you set a spell and listen to him play? I'll go make some lemonade. Come on, Abby. <coughs> Sam. He was having a tent meeting out on the edge of the wilderness at a place called Rome. 
Now them mountain folks were having a good time singing the good Lord's praises and doing some praying. And that old preacher Sam, he'd open up the good book and preach some fine sermons. Well, preacher Sam was about to some fiery words when David came along. I saw him there listening to preacher Sam going about people's sins and all. Now David, he was a praying to the Lord. I could hear him. He was wondering if he'd done something wrong to make Saul hate him. And he was asking the Lord to judge him. He knew the Lord was a righteous judge. Well, while David was praying, a posse rode up. Sheriff Saul had sent several posses all over the hills looking for David. Well, while the preacher was a preaching and the people was a listening and amening, then something strange happened. The posse got caught up in the sermon and amens and forgot to look for David. Then while the people were praying and praising the Lord, another posse rode up. And they too forgot to look for Davy, and they too started praising the Lord. Then a third posse rode up, and Sheriff Saul was with them. By now the tent meeting was crowded and it was getting late, but then mountain folks were having a good time singing hymns. Davy, he was certain that they would spot him, but it was practically a miracle. Old Saul and his posse got caught up in praising the Lord too. So I whispered to Davy, Lord's answer your prayer, son. You better get on out of here and head for the hills. So he got up, walked right out of that tent meeting, and escaped. A couple of days later, he came to that mission church settlement on Knob Hill. The parson there was named King. We called him Brother King. He got up in there, he went up in there to the hills to minister to the Indians. Davy, he stopped by his place hoping to get something to eat and some supplies for the wilderness. But Brother King, he was mighty curious about what David was doing and where he was going. He knew there were outlaws around, and he thought that David might be one. Well, Davy, I'm sad to say, told some bald-faced lies to that preacher man, told him he was on a secret mission for the sheriff, and that the sheriff wanted him to get some supplies from the mission. So Brother King fixed him some fiddles and some grub and the supplies that were brought to give to the Indians. He even gave him a haunting rifle that used to belong to the big, bad man. Well, unfortunately, while David was there, a number of folks spotted him hanging around the mission. One of them was another shepherd by the name of Doug Edom. Doug, he was a real bad sort. Ugly and mean, he enjoyed hurting people. <laughs> and then David headed off, thought he might hide among some Indians who had a camp near the mission. They didn't want any part of him either. So David finally hid out in the cave in a place I knew of called a dove. David, he did a lot of praying in that cave. He told God he had to hide in him because there were lots of folks out to get him. They just tell lies about him and set traps to catch him. But despite it all, little David, he kept on praising and trusting the Lord. Well, it wasn't long before David found out how wrong he had been to tell them lies about missionary. That tent meeting and singing those hymns didn't have much effect on Saul's heart at all. He was determined to get Davy and have put up a reward. When Doug Edom found out that Saul was looking for Davy, he told him about Davy being at the mission at Knob Hill. Soon the posse rode up and found Brother King attending his garden. Saul asked him about Davy. And Brother King, he admitted that he helped him, but it was because of Davy's lies. Now Saul, he was very upset that the parson had helped David escape, giving him that hunting rifle and all. He was all for burning that church down, except Deputy John talked him out of it, or thought he had. But Sheriff Saul, he had made a deal with Doug Edom. That night, Doug killed the missionary and all his family, except in one of Brother King's boys who escaped with the church body and burned that church and settlement to the ground. And while Saul kept quiet about it, Doug, he did some bragging. Now, Davy, he was heartbroken when he had found out what had happened. Brother King's son Goodby told him. And Davy, he felt really bad because it was his fault that trouble had come upon the kings. But Davy, he did some confessing to the Lord and asking for forgiveness. He was all then in there to never tell another lie and to always trust God to take care of him. Oh, that God was talking. Think y'all have a good one? I sure do. All the storytelling has got me parched. <coughs> That's good coffee. <coughs> right. Oh, give that to our story. <coughs> you know, now Law's life.
life is hard, things are mighty and certain, you have to move hideouts a lot. You're hungry a lot. And you can't just go to, go to town and get supplies, because the sheriff has got a lot of help trying to catch you. He's putting posters all over with a, with a big report offer. He's asking lots of people questions and hiring bounty hunters like me and Doug Edom, too. He's looking for any information on your whereabouts so his posse can ride and catch you. Davy wasn't the only one hiding in the wilderness. Soon, a few other young men like Good the King had found them and decided to join them. Now, Davy, he was a strange outlaw. For one thing, he hadn't done anything wrong, though jealous Sheriff Saul was determined to catch him. And for another thing, he insisted on doing things God's way. He read the Bible that Goodly had brought him and prayed a lot, asking God to guide him and give him directions. Davy and his gang moved around a lot. Sheriff Saul kept trying to catch him, but Davy, he always seemed one step ahead. It was a number of months later that Davy decided to do something his gang thought was a very bad idea. Well, it seems that the Indians were making trouble for this town of miners called Keela. Davy, he knew he should help him out, but if he did, they might get caught. But helping other people in their troubles was God's way, so Davy and his gang helped him fight off those raiding Indians. The way I heard it, he saved the town. But it wasn't long before Davy got nervous. He was wondering if those miners might let Saul know where he was, or even turn him over to him. For in fact, Saul had already heard about Davy being there, and his posse was getting ready to rob him. And Davy prayed, asking if Saul was coming, and the Lord answered that he was. Then Davy asked if the folks in Keilah would hide him or turn him over, and the Lord again answered that they would turn him in. So Davy and his men headed for the hills, and just in time, too. Sad, isn't it, that those foolish miners who betrayed boy could save their scalps? That's the Lord's Lord, I guess. Anyway, Davy has been spending an awful lot of time in the wilderness of Zip lately. That's a desolate place with lots of twisty, windy canyons and jagged mountains and plenty of desert country, too. Game is scarce and water scarcer. The only folks out there is some trappers and prospectors like us. Now, Davy's been mighty careful, but Saul, he has been collecting lots of information on Davy's whereabouts from those trappers and prospectors. Just yesterday, Davy had a real close call because of those rascals, and his posse was a coming on fast. Davy and his friends had to mount up their stuff and leave their camp stuff still sitting, and the fire is still burning. Just as Davy and his boys rode up on the east side of that mountain, Saul came riding on the west side of that very same mountain. They were that close. Saul found his camp in the fire and was about to take off tracking Davy when a man from Cowtown rode up and told him that the Indians were raiding near Cowtown. Now Saul, he was sure mad that he'd give up chasing Davy that day, being so close and all, but he and his posse headed back to town. Yes, sir, Davy's had his troubles and uncertainties, but he just keeps praying and trusting that God will deliver him. A righteous man may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. Davy keeps saying that those who seek the Lord like no good thing. And God has delivered him again and again. And no matter what troubles come Davy's way, he is determined to trust God to take care of him. Well, it's getting late. I do need my beauty sleep. I gotta take the trail at the crack of dawn, Wendy. So it looks like you're gonna have to finish this tale on your own. Happy trails, Breezy. Davy's really gonna need my help tomorrow, so I reckon I better turn in for now, too. Good night, boys and girls. Does it? He's being chased around like an outlaw. 
Well, right now, he's hiding out in a cave and then- That's right, it's not fair. I'm tired of running. It's time Saul and I have a showdown. Or, that while all this is happening, a bad person like Snake Oil Snidely is getting away with all sorts of bad things. And why not? It's the way of the world, you know. I get what I want by sneak or cheat or steal. It was you that framed me. I'll get you. Hold on there, son. There's still more yet to today's story. That's right. The part where I get the gold, the glory, and everything that's coming to me. No, Snidely, that part comes later. We have a play to do, a story to get back to. You're not supposed to be here. Get back to your places, please. So do so I get to get even now? No, Davey. Paying back or getting even accomplishes nothing. It's time you learned about showing mercy. While well, right now, Saul and his posse have showed up just outside your cave. It's not me up this canyon. Whoa, ho, ho, boys. It's sure hot. Let's say we stop and catch some shade. I'm trapped. What if he sees me? Quick, hide back in that dark place. This cave looks nice and cool. Think I'll take my hat off and catch a few winks. What are you going to do, Davey? Boy, I can get it out, couldn't I? Would that be the right thing to do? His posse's right outside. I won't come to What? Uh, I guess you're right. Feel better now that you're fine Well, a little. <laughs> Actually, to tell you the truth, no. Mm -hmm. Sure, wrap up your head. It looks like you sat on it. I don't know. Let's mount up and hit the trail, deputy. Quick, he's down the valley now. You can get away now. Hey, Sheriff sure, Saul. What happened to your hat? Uh, uh, is that you, Davey, my boy? Yep, and it was me that squashed your hat. I want you to know that I'm innocent, and even though you're out to get me, I've done nothing wrong. Davey, you are a better man than I. You couldn't let me have it in that there cave, and you didn't. For that, I'll let you ride. This time. But stay out of cab time, you hear? Giddy up, boys. Boy, that felt good. What did you call that, you know, you could get even, but you don't. Mercy? Yeah, mercy. Well, I got a ride. Thanks. <laughs> That's disgusting. And after I told Saul there it was. What? I wanted Davy to let him have it. That was my plan. It's what I would have done. You really don't get this old mercy thing, do you? Oh, I understand all right. You goody goody cops are a bunch of weaklings. It's easy to be merciful when you're powerless to do anything else. Let me tell you a story about David Snake. The name's Snipe. No, I call you for what you are and I've always been since the garden. Snake. When David was on the run, he came to a cabin of a mountain man by the name of Nabal, who lived in the lonely hills with his daughter, Abby. Now, Nabal, he was a lot like you, Snake. Harsh and evil in his dealings with people. But Abby, she was a lot like Clementine. Pretty, but even smarter than Clem. Now, a couple of times, David had helped him out. He killed a bear monster, so I about to be Nabal's mule. But now it was winter, and Davy, he was mighty hungry. So he knocked on the cabin door, asked for some grub, David's bear son. But Nabal, he just laughed and slammed the door in Davy's face. Yep, yeah, that's my type of folks for sure. We got that right. And Davy, he was mad, wanting to go down there and burn down that cabin and take off with the mule. Nabal being so ungrateful and all. Yep, yeah, that's what I do all right. I don't get mad, I get even. But Abby, she knew David was probably thinking that too. She knew that what Nabal had done was wrong. David had helped him and treated them right. So she grabbed some rub and set off after him. She met with him and pleaded with him, thanking him for not getting even, even though she knew he was about to burn down their cabin. But then she gave him the grub she brought. So what did David do? Well, David, he admitted, rather red-faced, that he was about to burn down that cabin and take off with the mule for what Nabal had done. But then he thanked her for reminding him that vengeance belongs to the Lord. And it was because of her reminder that he showed mercy instead of getting even. <laughs> mercy? For the likes of that no good sheep smell of bank robin sheriff wannabe. Since when does he deserve mercy? Saul, why is your heart so cold? You have been shown mercy. Don't you know you need to show it too? Oh wait, there's some more yet to today's story. 
So this is the next time you were chasing David around the wilderness. You were sleeping in your cave, and David came to where you were and took your pistol right out of your holster. David, this is your chance. You got the power in your hand. Use it. I shoot the sheriff, who is the law. Those make me a law I want no better than you. Then give me the pistol and I'll plug it for you. What are you going to do, David? I'll show you. Hey! Saw the posse, Sheriff. Baby, is that you in the dark? It's me. And even though you have to get me, I want you to know that I've done nothing wrong. Are you going to shoot me, Davy? The fool Davy shoot him. He'd shoot you in a blink and you know it. I'm no outlaw. The Lord knows that and I know that. I could shoot you, Saul, but I won't. The Lord can be the judge between us. He knows how to show mercy better than me. Maybe I was wrong, Davy. I'm sorry I tried to harm you. Come back to Cowtown. No, Sheriff, I don't trust you. I'll be leaving these parts now. I'll leave your shooting iron on the trail. Say goodbye to Clementine for me. That's the difference between Davy and you, Snake. He knows how to be merciful, and he knows mercy is more powerful than revenge. Curses. Foil again. Now that the Sheriff's heading back to Cowtown, I guess it's time for plan three. Firewater and Indian. And what's that? What did you like to know? The pot rack with the gold, the glory, and everything that's coming to me. Oh, you'll get that soon enough. That part is coming next. Are you loco? 
Sugar from the milk. I'm a brave, not a trait. I mean loco, you know, crazy, nuts, psychologically disturbed. I'm not crazy, but he is. You wouldn't scout for crazy man, would you? How do I know you're crazy? Well, would I want to join the Indians if I wasn't? According to my introduction, Chief, but he does have a point there before the moment is here, too. I thought we could become blood brothers. Blood brothers? What is that? A custom the pale faces think we have, something to do with knives, I think. It's a very unwise and unhealthy custom. I would discourage any part of it. Forget that, then. You will take our Indian oath of allegiance and swear to the disclaimer. Sure, I will. Chief, do I get to beat the drum? Do I get a tomahawk? Okay, assign him a TV. Get him a uniform. Rain dance practice starts after lunch. Remember our deal, Chief? I remember. You and your tribe do a little regular workout practice. Then you take care of that sheriff and his deputy. And I'll supply you with plenty of root beer. Care for us it. We will remember. The Indians are on warpath. Raiding the nearby farms and ranches, people are upset. Meanwhile, Sheriff Saw and Deputy John are going to try and stop them. Are we ready, Sheriff? Yep. We gotta stop those thieving Indians before they get up the nerve to attack Cowtown again. And I think that day the outlaws with them. I smelled trouble when I first met them. Sheep. You. I'll get the horses and the men together. You got it. Father, do you do anything to harm us? I know you're well enough. The Indians were peaceful until he joined them. Forget him from the time he's no good. Find yourself another boyfriend. Oh, Father, if only you could see past your jokes. <laughs> Sheriff, there you are. Did you get that information I wanted? Straight from a witch doctor, or so to speak. Yes, the Indians have been camped in Dead Horse Canyon. The trap about I ever saw one. Yeah, and only Sheriff Saul will be the one in the trap. The cow's hand will be all mine. Only one way in and no way out. Good deal. Come in time. Give your father a hug. I have to go. Oh, father, please be careful. Don't hurt Davy. I will be careful, darling. But I won't spare that outlaw. I got a ride. Only Davy were here. <sighs> Miss Clementine, your Davy's gone, and now your father, she. I will take care of you. I'll make you my number one rock gut sastrella salesperson. What do you mean? Plenty of times, I have long admired your sales and your skills. I have recently become a successful businesswoman, and I need someone lovable like you to entice to join your cowboys to my establishment and distract them while I serve rock that type of fellow. That doesn't sound like an honest way to do business. I don't think I'm interested. Tonight, let's cow cow saloon open tomorrow. I've taken over the board more to your whorehouse. house. It belongs to me now. That's my home. You bought it how? Let's just say I got a little bit of a it was you that robbed the bank. You framed Davy. When my father gets back, he's not coming back, my dear. What? He's riding through a trap. Just a little arrangement between myself and the Indians. Oh, no. You'll come to work for me tomorrow. Never. So I have the gold, the glory, and everything that's coming to me. You'll come to work for me tomorrow or else. Or else? Or else I'll tie you to the railroad track until you change your mind or the train comes. Whichever happens first. <laughs> So Davy decided to join the Indians who planned to massacre Saul and John. Meanwhile, the snake plans to tie Clementine down by the railroad tracks unless she agrees to work for her. And where is the cavalry when you need them? The Lone Ranger! Ranger, Tonto, even Roy Rogers, who will save this day? We will find out in the conclusion to our play. Leave him behind. 
Sorry, Davy. You can't go on the warpath with us today. You must stay here. The Indians have decided. What have I done that you don't trust me? Sorry. You must stay. We must go. Disappointed, Davy? Yep. Nobody likes me. Nobody wants me. People from Cowtown now. Now the Indians don't either. I haven't been so discouraged. Everything has gone wrong. Maybe it's for the best. Sometimes the best things happen when things are at their worst. The best? Why? Well, you wouldn't have wanted to go to war with their own people, would you? No. I guess I wouldn't have. You know, I'm kind of glad I don't have to go. Besides, I have other plans for you, and they involve Cowtown and Clementine. What? It's up to you now to save Clementine and to give Snake Oil Snidely everything that's coming to her. Snake? What is that? <clears throat> Stone of Dirt. There's no time to explain. You have a train to catch. You better ride like a thief. Yeah, Snake, you got everything coming to you now. Sure, come with me. See anything, Deputy? Nope, kind of feather. Alright, I'll look around. Come cover me. Did you check those rocks? Not here. How about behind those trees? Nope, not here. How about them bushes over there? Nope, not here either. I was sure the Indians were in this dead horse canyon, and I was sure that no good sheep smelled Lake Robert Sheriff One he was here too. Who told you that? Snake got the information for me. She traded some of her rock gas sarsaparilla to the Indians for it. You trusted her and broke the law too, letting her give root beer to them Indians? Hey, I did what I had to do, but she was wrong. The Indians aren't here. No, she was right. They're here. Hey, we're surrounded. Hey, hey. Cowtown. 
We go in peace now, great warrior Davy. Come, come inside. We must ride home to Cowtown. My hero, Sheriff Davy. My darling, come inside. And so, we come to the end of our drama, The Ballad of Davy the Outlaw. As you have learned this week, our tale has been based on the life of a real David who was pursued wrongly by a real Saul in the wilderness. Many similar events happened in David's life before he became king. He killed a giant named Goliath, warned by his friend Jonathan and his first wife Michael to flee from the jealous Saul. He spared Saul class in the wilderness, pretended to act crazy and live with the Philistines, and when sent away from war in which King Saul and Jonathan were killed, he had to save his second wife Abigail from the Amalekites. David is a man of character, brave, loyal, obedient to God, and merciful. God delivered him from many troubles because he was what God wanted, a man after God's own heart.